this is something I have to tell you, and this is something I have to tell you, and this is not hate speech or anything. I am a non-conformist, non-traditional Muslim who is also a lesbian and a punk rocker. This is not a joke, people. I've been Muslim since I was 17 years old, 18 since for being LGBTQ, and I've been punk most of my life. And I usually get a lot of praise for it from non-Muslims, but from the Muslims, I get a lot of hatred from being gay. And this is my story, and I want you to know that this isn't hate speech. This is my story of being Muslim and LGBT and punk. Okay, it started last October. I saw no problem being lesbian and Muslim until I joined this group called, and it's a hate group, called Korean Muslim. And they were very adamant that I ought to be not Muslim and stuff. Well, to tell you the truth, they were a bunch of r homophobes and racists who didn't like the fact that I was of different cultures, Muslim or not, or that I am lesbian. I'll tell you a start here. When I was 17, it started with poetry, and then I gradually converted to Islam privately, and I just came out of the closet of that recently. But I tried to join groups on Facebook, but that didn't work. When I joined Korean Muslim, they automatically booted, tried to boot me out or boot me out of the religion that I had a right to belong in, in this part of the world at least. And they were calling me names like uh, the D word or that rhymes with bike and other stuff that's not nice told me to eat dick and other stuff. It wasn't too pleasant. I, because I have piercings and I'm LGBTQ and punk, I do not wear the hijab. I wear a kufi instead of a hijab. I don't even wear the hijab. So why the hell do I even bother? But I do believe there is a God or a greater power. And that's what keeps my driving force going. This is. I also got hate speech on you now, the app, because I am diminutive of size, because of my Asian and South Asian heritage and my Muslim heritage. I was called all kinds of names like Sand Beep and other horrible names. And they said that I looked like a boy, but I'm really a butch lesbian. And they actually uh, said that I could be banned because I was impersonating a girl. When really, I am a girl. And I am actually 32 years old. And they were calling me Sand Beep and Dune Beep and all these other names. So I got it from the non-Muslims as well as the Muslims. So this is not hate speech. This a year ago, I was persecuted for getting a bag of Doritos in a grocery store because of my race and religion, which is very apparent, as you can tell by the amount of piercings I have. And he said... He said that if I didn't socially distance, he was going to call the police. I call him a Nazi you-know-what. And he uh, didn't like that and threatened me with the police. And I told him, go ahead, call the police. I don't care. My mom got involved and she really tore him a new one. Racism to me is not a joke or a fancy. It's real. It's And it's disgusting. So I've been through that in my old hometown of Almont as well. My mother fought for me to avoid getting 
charged and try to get the grocery store to go under for what they did to me when they threatened me with the police just because of my race. They called me Chink. That's the tamest one. And then Sand Beep and Dune Coon. Just like on, um, Flippin' You Now. And they, it wasn't nice. I might not look like your average Muslim, I might not look like your average Asian, but there's a reason why I do piercings, and why piercings are a passion to me, because it's my way of communing with God, and this is basically what I'm telling you, is that I'm going to tell that I'm no different from you. And as far as uh, people who think that I'm subhuman because I'm either Muslim or I don't look Muslim enough or I don't pray five times a day as I should, well, guess what? I read the Quran in Arabic and in English, and I am. This is the big thing. I actually submit to God. I at least know what His plans are for me. But anyway, what you should do is treat people as human beings, as they should be treated, with respect. I don't care what religion, sex, orientation, race. I told you my story about what I had to deal with with hatred. And this has been a difficult story for me to tell. And I'm probably going to get pegged. So this is where I'm... I am not a big fan of hate speech or hatred or racism or homophobia or Islamophobia. But as I said, I've had to deal with all of that all my life from school to right now. I get called names and retard and all those other lovely names. I'm just going to put that down and I just I get put down all the time and dissed and called and bullied because of who I am so it's really hard and it's been hard for my mother as well she's proud of who I became a decent human being but I still get disrespected I have faced a lot of hardships because of my mental illness with PTSD, Asperger's, and depression, and I've and hatred because of my religion and my sexuality on both parts of the Islamic world, the non-Islamic and the Islamic world, don't like me very much. And whoever does is not a very savory person. Anyway, the only person that has kept me alive this whole time, other than myself and Allah, let's just say that, because I am Muslim, and it would be my mother. She was my sa she helped me through these rough times, along with God, Allah, and also other things. She stuck up for me, and she was my number one. One of the hardships I had to deal with was a girl named uh, Kay, let's say. And she uh, bullied me until I was nearly in prison or dead. She, want, she tried to starve me to death and make me look like an anorexic because of my PTSD. She uh, got me into fights because of my religion. And as far as social media is concerned, that was in elementary school, high school, I was respected. But in social media, I get nothing but bullshit. Hatred, hate speech, you name it, I get it. And it's been a very traumatic life for me. But I chose, if I wouldn't, if I would, I'd do it all over again. I am going to tell you this right now, both to the Muslims and the non-Muslims, and the haters, 
that I have a heart, lungs, stomach, intestines. I got the same anatomy as you. I have the same emotions as you. And the same thought, not the same thoughts, but thought process as you. I might not be hateful in my thoughts, but I do think, I feel, I have dreams, I have desires, I wants and needs, and I have the same anatomy as every other girl, Muslim or not, and it really hurts me to be called these names. And really, this is a how to not be a jerk, because it can really hurt someone when you call someone a racist name or a hateful thing. I find solace in the Quran and in other books, whether it be holy books or the Quran. I also find solace in pen palling with people from other parts of the world so I don't feel alone because that's the only way I can engage with people is by dealing with pen pals through snail mail or email. I'm not giving you my email anyway, but pen pals are the best thing since sliced bread. And I, they don't give me any bull because they've been through the same thing because they're from different cultures as well. I find that it's important that we uh, be respectful to one another that's all I can say. I also write on Wattpad my different um, days, like the good days and the bad days and the ugly days. I also write about being LGBTQ and Muslim and being LGBTQ as well as not being Muslim because we want to know that the, we are only human beings. Whoever we are, we're only human. That's it. DNA, three chrom 23 chromosomes from Mo, three chromosome, 23 chromosomes from Dad, and it bugs me that people hate people for that. And this has been my uh, thing throughout my life. I just want people to know that there are people like me who are LGBTQ and Muslim. We have the same DNA as you. The same amount of chromosomes. 23 chromosomes from both parents. And we have feelings, desires, dreams. I want to be a tattoo artist for fuck's sake. And I don't want to be hated upon. I also don't think that it's right with this Asian hatred. It bugs the shit out of me, be, this Asian hatred. Because we're only human at the end of the day. And at the end of our lives, we're only human. And we have the same anatomy and DNA and stuff when we go to the autopsy table. So why do you fucking have to hate people? I'm just saying that people have to treat other people with respect before it's too late, before the human race suffers or we suffer as individuals. This hatred, whether it be anti-Semitism or anti-Asian or anti-Muslim, should stop because it's hurting everybody. It hurts me the most, but it hurts everyone. This makes me very, very emotional and very passionate. As I said, there are plenty of people in the world. If you diss, if you diss someone for their religion, DNA, or their fucking orientation, you diss yourself. You disrespect yourself as well as a human being. You don't just disrespect the other person when you diss someone or hate someone, you actually hate yourself and disrespect yourself as well.
that's what I learned about Islam is that if you want respect, you give respect back. If you don't want respect, you can diss people and diss your and then you'll get you'll diss yourself. Try to love one each one of each other. Don't hate. This is all I have to say as my closing statement is do not peddle hate. Peddle love. Hate and Hatred is like COVID. It is very, very contagious. Do not peddle hate. It'll spread. Peddle love. It'll spread faster. That is all I have to say. Peace, love, and granola, everyone. I'm sorry if I got a little emotional.